Welcome to Perennial Meditations, a podcast by the Perennial Leader Project. Do you have someone in your life, past or present, that you look to as an example of virtue in action? The Stoics did. They turned to figures like Socrates and Cato. Similarly, many spiritual traditions have great saints and theologians that they look to as models or guides. In a passage from the Enchiridion, Epictetus says, I quote, From now on, then, resolve to live as a grown-up who is making progress and make whatever you think best a law that you never set aside. And whenever you encounter anything that is difficult or pleasurable or highly or lowly regarded, remember that the contest is now. You are at the Olympic Games. You cannot wait any longer. And that your progress is wrecked or preserved by a single day and a single event. That is how Socrates fulfilled himself by attending to nothing except reason in everything he encountered. And you, although you are not yet a Socrates, should live as someone who at least at least wants to be a Socrates. End quote. In a recent conversation on In Search of Wisdom with Massimo Pigliucci, the author of The Quest for Character, revealed that there's significant research behind the notion of role models. In this short clip I'll share with you, I asked the question of how do we actually know thyself? And Massimo brings in the, the role of how friends, mentors, past or present can help us do so. You write in, in the book of how Socrates identified one of the the issues with Alcibiades was this uh, lack of basically following the inscription at, at Delphi, right. know thyself. And today, many listeners, m myself as well, you know, you hear know thyself. It can be open to interpretation. Like, how do Certainly. you take that? Is it possible to, to know yourself? How does one go about doing so? It's not easy, which is why, of course, the, it was the, the top inscription at Delphi, right? It, it was the top priority. Uh, if it were easy, then you wouldn't need to write it down <laughs> anywhere, and you, do, you wouldn't need a Socrates to remind you of it. It's not easy for a number of reasons. First of all, modern psychologists have shown that we have a tendency to rationalize uh, things for ourselves rather than to think reasonably about, about it. I mean, we're, we're capable of, reason, of rational thinking. It's not like we're not. But... A lot of the times we rationalize, we, we, we convince ourselves that a certain thing is right even though it might not be, or that a certain thing is good for us while it might, it might not be good for us. Uh, so, so that's the first obstacle, that uh, we fool ourselves very easily. It's not impossible to get beyond that, it's not impossible to, to face who you really are, but it's hard work. And it's hard work that requires help. The, the ancient Greco-Romans realized this, and that's why they came up with these notions of mentorship or role models or, or friends who are going to be helping you becoming a better person. You cannot do it yourself, because if you try to do it yourself, it's too easy to, to fall into complacency and, and rationalizing. That's one reason it's, it's difficult. The other reason is that it's difficult to know thyself is because there is no essential self there to be discovered. Right. Sometimes we talk about it as if there was a kernel of Massimo, the real Massimo that's right here in the back. And if I only could find out what that is, then, then I'm going to be happy and then I'm going to be fine. Right? It's like, no, there is no such a thing. The self, what we call the self, is not a stable, essential entity that defines who I am at all times. It's a dynamic process. It changes all the time. Right? I am in part responsible 
for who I am. I say in part because, of course, the, the, the rest of it comes from my genetic background uh, that I inherited from my parents. It comes from my cultural background in which I was born and raised, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But part of it is the result of my own decision-making. I'm part of the causal web of the universe, so to speak. I'm not just a puppet that, I'm, you know, that is being moved uh, you know, passively. Part of the, the, the decision-making, part of the causal efficacy of the universe is my internal mechanisms of decision making my brain my my ability to think about stuff and make decisions so the self is not a a, a straightforward unchanging target uh, and therefore it's difficult to know thyself you really more than know thyself one should say you know build yourself that might be actually a better way to to do it you know decide who as epictetus says decide who you want to be and then start being that person right and that's mm -hmm. where philosophy really comes in uh the question i think that we should be asking ourselves is who do i want to be what kind of person do i want to be and once you have that clear in mind and philosophy certainly is helpful for that then you can start saying okay well if i want to get there what is the best way what, are, what, are, what strategies work? What kind of practices work? Again, with, you, know, you, can, you can pick the analogy which the Greco-Romans often made with athletics. Right? So I want to be a disc, disc thrower or a, a long distance runner or something like that. Well, those are two different things. And I need to train differently uh, for it. You know, they require different kinds of muscles, different, different kinds of exercise, and so on and so forth. So I cannot be just decide to be an athlete, period. That doesn't mean anything. It's, it's too generic. Right? It's like, well, what kind of athlete? What, 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 what do you want to do? And once you have make, made that decision, then you can start working. You can go to a mentor who specializes in that sort of stuff and, and say, okay, what, what do I do in order to be that, that kind of person? So, yeah, it is very difficult, but that doesn't mean it's not important. In fact, I would say precisely because it is difficult, you cannot take it for granted. And it's a good idea if, if we occasionally at least stop and think about who we want to be and how do we, do we get there. As Massimo points out, the quest for character, knowing ourselves, these are all difficult tasks. We need all the help we can get. For this reason, in a letter to Lucilius, Seneca advised, I quote, So choose yourself a Cato. Choose someone whose way of life as well as words, and whose very face as mirroring the character that lies behind it, have won your approval. Be always pointing out to yourself, either as your guardian or as your model. There is a need, in my view, for someone as a standard against which our character can measure themselves. End quote. In closing, we can learn a great deal from the lives of those that have come before us. When we're navigating our particular path in modern life, we can ask ourselves, what would Socrates do? How would Seneca handle this situation? What would Jesus do? What is that, that mark that we might look to to help us here in modern life to lead the type of life that we actually want to lead? So I ask you, who is your Socrates? Thank you for subscribing and listening to another episode of the Perennial Meditations podcast. I hope you found something useful for daily life. If so, I urge you to put what you heard into practice. Until next time, be wise and be well.